Welcome back here to CBS 12 News this morning. You know, it sometimes seems like most of the battles being fought in schools are about politics and pronouns, but there's a bigger crisis playing out in our classrooms and the stakes are much higher. You've probably heard the phrase up until third grade, kids are learning to read after third grade, they're reading to learn. But the reality is barely half of American kids can read at grade level. Florida is doing better, but only by a percentage point or two. And if reading is the most fundamental skill in a child's education, why are we failing to teach half of them? This week, CBS 12 News will be looking into what is happening in our local schools, asking the critical question, why can't our kids read? <laughs> These kids are diligently learning how to read. Can you give me a sentence with the word? While some of their classmates read silently to themselves. <laughs> this is not a Palm Beach County public school. It's a small private school called Bliss Academy, started by a former district teacher, Anna Solanke, during the educational chaos of the pandemic. Florida has grown so much and the class sizes are too big, so I left the public school system. Right now, almost half the kids in public schools are not reading at grade level. Only 54% of Palm Beach County third graders made that mark last year. Let's go over While that is slightly the higher than the state average of 53%, it is not good enough. Tara Wallace worked as a Palm Beach County elementary I've school teacher and administrator for almost 20 years. It's nationwide, but we're normalizing failure. And Tara says you don't have to look far to find the answer why. It's known as the reading wars, which has been going on for decades, a debate about the correct way to teach kids how to read. There's the phonics way, which students learn each sound by each letter, s, uh, n, sun, to decode what each word says. And there's whole word reading, where students learn to memorize the word and use things like context clues, like the picture, to try to figure out what the word says. Actually, whole word reading has dominated American education over the last Last few years and it's only been recently that research has proven that whole word reading doesn't work for a lot of kids but we know today that's not reading that's memorization and that's why so many kids they may do well in kindergarten and first grade because they're memorizing the words so then when they get up to the intermediate grades and the text becomes more complex that's where we're seeing the struggle because they never really learned how to read. They learned how to memorize. Last year, Florida's Board of Education returned to teaching phonics to help kids read. But for many students, that change comes too late. And many whole word instructors have never taught any other way. Erica Whitfield has been on the Palm Beach County School Board for the last nine years. So when you look back and see that the school district spent so much time and so much money on not teaching phonics. Do yeah. you look back at that and see that as a, a waste of time and money? No, I don't think it's a waste. I mean, some people do well with it. Some people uh, don't need it as much. I think, you know, there, it's all different learning styles. We have to incorporate all ways for children to learn into it. So I don't think it was a waste of time. And the way kids are being taught is only part of the problem. Finding people to teach them is an issue as well. Palm Beach County Superintendent Mike Burke told CBS 12 News before the school year began, the district has been forced to think outside the box to fill hundreds of teacher vacancies. And now we are you know, kind of trying to get creative in finding teachers here. Uh, can that make that process of teaching reading to those elementary school kids that much more difficult? It can. I mean, you're seeing more people come into teaching where it wasn't necessarily their first career or they maybe had a degree in another subject matter that wasn't teaching, but then they, they go through the process of getting credentialed. Uh, so yeah, there's an advantage to being someone that knew from day one going into college, I want to teach elementary school, you know, and they've got the, that whole educational experience behind them. But Tara says even for her, who had the whole educational experience behind her, there's no substitute for the in-class experience. Upon teaching elementary, it was really a rude awakening because I had to teach these little kids how to read and I didn't know how because, you know, college of education, they don't necessarily give you the formula for teaching kids how to read. They will talk to you about doing read alouds and keeping the students engaged, but I didn't know how to teach them how to read. Now this is where math comes in handy. Fewer qualified teachers plus more students, half of whom need extra help with reading, equals a big problem. You can understand how students can fall through the cracks and how some, like these at Bliss Academy, leave for private school. I feel like some children can cope with it and the rest are lost.
Now, one literacy expert I spoke to for this series, we're going to hear from her later this week, tells me learning to read comes very easily for some students. You know, a little instruction, good support at home, and they're on their way. But other students, even some that are highly intelligent, very bright kids, still need discipline instruction to get there. So what does that mean? A lot of cases, intensive one-on-one -on -one instruction that's something that few school districts can afford to do right now, even if they do have the trained teachers to do it. Well, the district has put a lot of effort into finding, you know, and filling these empty teaching positions. What are they telling parents right now? Well, they're telling them basically that they want to rely on them, rely on the parents. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now, the school district is saying there are a lot of kids that are behind before they even show up for the first day of kindergarten, wow. already behind wow. before the first day of school. And more often than not, those kids never catch up. We're going to be talking about that more tomorrow. If you can't wait for tomorrow, you can listen to the audio documentary, Why Our Kids Can't Read, and listen to all my reporting that you'll be watching all this week and a lot more in just one place. You can go to cbs12.com to listen or listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Just search for Why Our Kids Can't Read.